More than 1,000 are feared dead after Cyclone Edai slammed into Mozambique four days ago. Now it's a race against time as aid is being rushed into the African nation. Dale Hurd has that story. The flattened beach settlement of Praia Nova. Cyclone Edai could prove to be the deadliest storm in generations to hit this poor nation of 30 million people. It submerged entire villages and left bodies floating in rapidly rising floodwaters. Floodwaters that have created an inland ocean some 30 miles wide, endangering many thousands of families. This woman says, in all my life I've never seen such a storm like this. But it took days for the scope of the disaster to become clear. In a nation with a poor communication and transportation network and a corrupt and inefficient government bureaucracy. The Red Cross says that 90 percent of the central port city of Beira has been damaged or destroyed. This woman says, we don't have food, it's a problem, we don't have anything. With winds of 125 miles an hour, the cyclone cut off electricity, forced the airport to shut down and cut off road access to the rest of the country. In Praia Nova, poorly constructed homes were wiped out. Local people say they've lost everything. This woman says, other years there have been storms, but not like this year. This year was the worst ever, washing away homes, clothes, food, and leaving us with nothing. Dale, CBN News. Definitely something to be in prayer about. U.S.-backed forces say they have taken over control of an ISIS encampment in Syria where militants have been besieged for months, refusing to surrender. Video shows ISIS fighters resisting inside the encampment amid fierce clashes and rising smoke from airstrikes. The area held in Baghouz is the last pocket of territory in Syria controlled by the extremist group. The battle to capture the territory has dragged on for weeks and would be a milestone in the four-year campaign to end the group's hold on territory. Brazil's new president meets with President Donald Trump today at the White House. Jair Bolsonaro will meet with Mr. Trump for his first overseas bilateral meeting since taking office. The two leaders are expected to discuss a wide range of issues, including trade, the crisis in Venezuela, and steps to strengthen relations between our two countries. Shortly after his Oval Office visit, Bolsonaro will sit down for an exclusive interview with CBN News senior international correspondent George Thomas to discuss the significance of his historic win, and you can catch that exclusive interview tomorrow, March 20th, right here on the CBN News Channel. President Trump signed a proclamation yesterday marking the anniversary of Greece's independence from the Ottoman Empire ahead of the March 25th holiday. Trump hosted a gathering in the East Room of the White House with members of the Greek Orthodox community to mark the occasion. At one point, he held up a Trump-style campaign hat that said, Make Greece Great Again, written in Greek. This evening, we also celebrate the countless ways Greek Americans strengthen and uplift and inspire our nation. You live by the values that are the foundation of America's greatness. You really do. You honor hard work. You love your families. You enrich your culture. And you embrace the American dream, and you keep faith in the blessings of Almighty God. And that's great. The president went on to say Greek people's influence profoundly shaped Western civilization dating back to ancient times. Our team in D.C. will have more on the latest in Washington on tonight's Faith Nation, and you can catch that right here on the CBN News Channel. Coming up, why one Republican congressman is suing Twitter. CBN presents The Eye Wills of God, your path to overcoming fear and anxiety. We're going to talk about some of the incredible promises God has made to his children. In Pat Robertson's newest teaching, you'll discover the I wills of God. I will rescue him, protect him, answer him, be with him in trouble, deliver him, honor him, satisfy him with long life, show him my salvation, and see amazing stories of God's promises in action. What I felt was loved and treasured. God spared my life twice in three days. The good Lord had given me a second chance. Break free from stress and despair. The Lord doesn't want you to live in fear. 
but to know the rewards given to those who love God. Call 1-800-700-7000 or visit cbn.com. The I Wills of God, your path to overcoming fear and anxiety. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Welcome back. Republican California Congressman Devin Nunes is suing Twitter for $250 million. He says Twitter shadow banned conservatives and censors content based on political views, and he has experienced it personally. MRC's Newsbusters reports the suit also goes after a handful of Twitter users who ran fake accounts impersonating Nunes' mother and making claims that he was racist, had white supremacist friends, and more. He also claims the Twitter shadow ban was also meant to derail his work as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Nunes reportedly has plans to sue other tech giants as well. Joining us now with more is the managing editor for Newsbusters, Curtis Houck. Welcome, Curtis. Good to be with you. Tell us, what can you tell us about this alleged shadow ban? Right, so he followed filed the lawsuit and then joined Sean Hannity last night. And he says that he's, as you laid out, shadow banned him, uh, lawful claims of abuse that Twitter ignored, and they censored content based on his ideology. So much so that uh, his content, you know, and he has tens of thousands of followers as a member of Congress and the chairman of a powerful committee, was, was not able to be shared by other users in terms of being shadow banned. So people weren't able to see it. So that's one of the reasons why he's filed the $250 million lawsuit. And of course, as you laid out there, one of the more bizarre parts of this whole thing is that he's going after Twitter users who ran fake accounts impersonating his mother, which is just absolutely unbelievable. Um, and the reason that he went after Twitter, to quote him here, he says, they are the main proliferator and they spread this fake news and slanders news. They need to come clean. They are not a public square, they are content developers. And that's one of the interesting things that we've seen over the last few years with Twitter is this question of what does this public square look like? You know, for some people, the way I'd like to think of it, sometimes Twitter feels like a WWE like wrestling match or something instead of an actual debate of, an, of ideas where certain storylines are played off one another, where uh, people's content are weighed more heavily than others. And there's a behavioral ranking that Twitter has. And that they they claimed here that Nunes' ranking was not hurt at all by any of this. Uh, or any of the things that he was saying. And Nunes is obviously arguing the opposite. Well, talk a little bit more about these alleged fake accounts. Is Nunes the only one, do you think? Oh, no, I highly doubt that. You know, we, we've seen smaller instances. We've seen people be banned for, for just the most innocuous reasons. I had a colleague, Vic Fondacaro, banned uh, you know, with really without any warning for a tweet that he had about CNN's Don Lemon last year. And it was only because we knew to reach out. We knew someone who knew someone able to reach out at Twitter and figure out what was going on. We've seen this happen at the Daily Caller. We've seen this all across conservative media. We saw this just this past week with Sean Davis at The Federalist trying to tweet about Lisa Page uh, and that links to his tweets were not being included and the people couldn't see. Um, so this is a pattern of behavior. And that's the, the that's the real issue here that we want people to take away here. It's one thing if one person has a problem um, but but it's a pattern of behavior all the way down from elected officials like Devin Nunes to uh, a staff writer here at Newsbusters, you know, um, and that's really what the issue is here. Just uh, whether it's being you know banning people for really no reason whatsoever, or 
as heinous as some of the things that Devin Nunes has gone through, being accused of treason, being called Benedict Arnold, threats being made against him, um, you know, being a white suprem having white supremacist friends, um, and then obviously then impersonating his mother, which is something that, you know, you shouldn't be able to do in terms of impersonating people without making clear that it's a parody. Um, so Twitter has some issues on its hands, needless to say, and this is the latest example of that you know, in a what's been a really bad week for the news media and Twitter writ large, because then you throw in the lawsuits by the Covington uh, Covington student Nicholas Sandman against the Washington Post and CNN. And Curtis, do you think these tech giants, not just Twitter, do you think they're working a, a leftist political agenda? Oh, absolutely. You just think about where they are. They think, you know, they're located in Silicon Valley, right below, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi, San Francisco, that whole corridor. Uh, is some of the bluest areas of America. So just from a geographical standpoint, the people that live there um, and all the universities there, the bias is automatically there. Um, and you have people, you know, that make a lot of money. They're very insulated. Uh, they have very lavish lifestyles. Um, and really, they have no sense of what goes on in flyover country or views that they think runs so counter to their narratives that it's something that shouldn't be allowed in the public square. So that's why you're kind of seeing some of these bans here. Just um, ge there's geographical and then there's also political reasons as well. Well, tell us about the Free Speech Alliance. Yeah, so that uh, that's one thing that's kind of come together recently that we're trying to just raise awareness about that. You know, I, one of the things I like to say when I talk about this issue is that it goes back to the First Amendment and how the First Amendment is not just something for the news media. C contrary to what you may see on CNN or some of these other news outlets, the First Amendment applies to all of us. Um, you know, and the, gov you know, the, the government won't make any laws um, establishing uh, state religion. There's freedom of religion, and then there, there is freedom of the press, and freedom for us to assemble, both physically, virtually here, and online. Um, and so I think that's what's really important here and what some of these movements are trying to do is underline the importance of this. And I think newsbusters will try to stand for the First Amendment here because we think people should be able to um, make their case, you know, so long as you're not doing something like advocating violence mm -hmm. uh, along those lines or truly defaming someone uh, where you make intentionally false claims knowing that it's false. But, but other than those extreme examples, the point is that the First Amendment is something that we in this country are afforded that other countries are not. And we see what's going on in New Zealand in the wake of the, the terror attacks, mm -hmm. that they're looking to curtail uh, freedom of speech um, online. And that's really something that's dangerous. And it plays into the hands of terrorists like the one in New Zealand that want to divide people. And Curtis, just quickly, all of these tech giants, I guess they're pushing back and denying the claims of Nunes and others who claim bias against conservative causes. Right, exactly. Read a quote here from a uh, product leak, Kayvon uh, Bakepore. Uh, quote, our behavioral ranking doesn't make judgments based on political views or substance of the tweets uh, in regards to Nunes. So they're denying this as well. So we'll see what happens here. But in most of these cases, or really all of these cases, as far as we've seen, Twitter has really denied that this has happened, or they just say that, you know, especially when someone's banned or suspended, that they violated their terms of service. And obviously if anyone sees what a terms of service is, it's like buying a car or, uh, you know, something or buying a house, the, the, the terms of service are, just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's the Bible. So it's huge. So trying to understand that is, you know, it's really tough to say that which part was did they violate here. And that's really difficult here without any some transparency. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're looking for more All than right. anything. Okay. Well, Curtis Halk with the Media Research Center's Newsbusters. Curtis Halk, thanks so much for your insight, sir. No problem. Anytime. All righty. Well, up next, how a group of Democrats and Republicans are coming together to fight religious persecution around the world. Parents, the Superbook Bible app is a great way to get your child reading the Bible because in today's busy world, we can use some help. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available now. Life, it's meant to be lived 
fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Discover the I wills of God. I will rescue him, protect him, answer him, be with him in trouble, deliver him, honor him, satisfy him with long life, show him my salvation. What I felt was loved and treasured. God spared my life twice in three days. The good Lord had given me a second chance. Call 1-800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com. The I wills of God, the latest teaching from Pat Robertson. You may find this hard to believe, but in Washington, there's a group of Democrats and Republicans coming together to shine a light on religious persecution around the world. Jennifer Wishon introduces us to one woman who believes the group's efforts are making a difference. Gail Manchin is the wife of Democrat West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. She's approaching her latest endeavor with families in mind. Families torn apart when a loved one is imprisoned for practicing their faith. When you see people in other countries that literally are willing to die rather than to uh, renounce what they believe, certainly gives you a different perspective on life. Manchin began seeing this last spring after joining the U.S. Commission for International Religious Freedom. Were you surprised at, at what a huge issue this is globally? Yes, because even though I had, I guess, an awareness uh, had no idea the extent uh, of abuse and violation to, for human rights as well as religious beliefs. Made up of nine members spanning the ideological spectrum, the commission represents different faiths and traditions. And one of the things that you do is you have a prisoner of conscience program. Tell me about that. We found that if you can put a face to an issue, how much uh, more uh, it resounds with the public and, and people get the message better. Case in point, Andrew day. Brunson, the pastor because recently freed after spending two years in a Turkish prison. A commissioner adopted well, Brunson, well, visited him while captive, and applied pressure on Turkey to release him. Tell me about the folks you've adopted. Both are from Iran. Mr. Tahiri is a writer. He was on, had been taken from prison, was retried and put on death row. And then just recently, was taken back out and taken off death row, but his sentence has been extended for five more years. Do we hope that perhaps him being a prisoner of conscience helped raise the awareness and took him off death row? We, we don't know, but we certainly hope so. Uh, my other uh, uh, prisoner is a woman, Golrock Irahe. She was writing about the injustice of women being stoned for, cre for committing adultery. And for that, um, she was arrested for breaking Islamic sanctities. Her writings were not even published. They came into her home and confiscated writings and found this and used that against her. Manchin has learned from Arahi's sister that this attention from America makes a difference. What I have found in serving on this commission and traveling to other countries, they care about what the United States thinks of them. And the fact that we bring out these uh, violations and discriminations you know, gives them pause. 
I believe. But it takes patience. Nine prisoners of conscience have been released, yet the overall situation grows more serious with each passing day. It is a commitment and dedication to a, a large issue, a global issue that is not getting better, unfortunately. Uh, it seems like that in many of the countries that we are watching, uh, it, the conditions are deteriorating, not getting better, and so we cannot let up. The U.S. promotes religious freedom around the world because countries that allow its people to worship freely tend to be friendly neighbors. Jennifer Wish on CBN News, Washington. And here's what's trending now on CBNNews.com. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, Homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Hello, is this thing on? Hey kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah. Well, do you? Yeah. Then you're gonna love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. Regents first ROTC graduate student. A miracle story is emerging after a tornado swept through Kentucky last week. The storm ripped the roof off this church building where 40 preschool kids and 10 church staff were inside. The Baptist Press reported the only room that survived unscathed was the room they were in, and miraculously, no one was killed or injured. Church members say during the storm, the kids were singing, Jesus loves me, and he's got the whole world in his hands. The twister damaged several other buildings, nearby. I don't know how you can say it's not God. That was definitely divine intervention. A reminder now to check out our CBN News Daily Rundown podcast with Caitlin Burke. She gives us a behind-the-scenes look at a key story in the news every day, and you can find it at CBNNews.com on the show tab. Just click on its title to listen and subscribe. That's it for this edition of News Watch. You can find more on the issues you care about most at CBNNews.com and can watch CBN News programs anytime on our CBN News channel. Plus, tell us what you think about the stories you've seen here by emailing newswatch at CBN.